A storm Arwen rages on here in the UK. The Met Office has said to expect more wintry conditions as temperatures plummeted below minus 10 degrees Celsius overnight. Storm Arwen has left three people dead and half a million households without power. A cold weather alert was issued by the UK Health Security, who clocked winds from Arwen maxing out at over 100 miles an hour. As Storm Arwen pushes out across the rest of Europe, I have decided that it would finally be safe enough now to head back up to the shelter and assess any damage left at camp base. Hi guys, welcome back to the 401 Files. It's an absolute pleasure as I always say to have each and every one of you back here with me. I did say a few weeks back um, on one of my previous videos that if we get snow, it's going to be coming um, in, uh, my mouth's cold. If we get snow, it's going to become impassable to get further down this way with the car. So as it is, I've got as far as I can with the car. Lily, heel. And um, I've started walking the rest on foot. The main aim or the main goal for today is just basically to head to the shelter and see if it's still intact because we have recently been hit by a big storm here in the UK and I can already see that there's a lot of fallen trees around me and um, I'm fearing the worst for this shelter. Fingers crossed though everything is still intact but I just know with these pine trees in high winds they flex a lot and the main supporting beam of my structure is tied to two palm trees. Now when the flexing, that's gonna make the cordage that I've used um, expand, retract, and essentially loosen up. So the whole shelter will become unstable over time if they keep flexing in that way. So yeah, I'm, hope I'm hopeful, but at the same time, fearing the worst. So we shall see, we shall see. Lily's loving it. In fact, she's pulling my arm off because there's so many different smells out here now, now the snow's laid. She just wants to be off, but there's no chance, not today. I can't risk waiting around in this cold for an hour or two for her to come back, so. If the shelter's still there, I'll be absolutely amazed, to be honest. And I think that that will speak volumes for my bushcrafting skills. If not, we go back to the drawing board and uh, we look at where we failed. That's the beauty of this, um, living and building out in the wild, is that you never stop learning. And even when you think you've got something right, there's always better ways of doing things. So we'll get there, we'll assess the damage if there is any. And um, I'm not going to get too disheartened, or try not to. I mean, I have put a lot of work in to this shelter, as you guys have seen. And a lot of this was done by hand, with a handsaw. I wasn't using any kind of power tools, um, like a battery saw or anything like that. So yeah, I would be a little bit devastated, but the show must go on. So if it is damaged and lying on the floor in a big heap, we just check out where the problem is laid. It might not even be anything to do with the way I've built the shelter. It might just be that the tree's falling on top of it. Who knows until we get there, but in that situation, there's not really much I could have done either way. Yeah, but I'm excited and also I'm quite anxious because we have to start from day one again, I suppose, guys, if, if the shelter is gone. And uh, that was a lot of work. I can tell you that, so. I'm almost at the shelter now and I can kind of see it but um, not quite make out if it's intact or not but there is a hell of a lot um, of fallen trees in this area um, in particular this big thing over here which is fallen right in the direction of the shelter you can just see the blue tap with the trees there so we're gonna move a bit closer in and um, assess the damage. I think that I must be the luckiest guy ever because 
Look at the size of this root ball and this tree that's been pulled up completely from the ground. This is brand new. This was not here the last time I was talking to you guys. Absolutely huge. And you can see all along the floor there, look, just hundreds of branches and large sections of tree fallen in the direction of the shelter. Now from where I'm standing, the shelter still looks like it's intact. Um, but we shall see. Look at the debris in this whole area. The whole landscape has changed now from when I was last here. And it's all fallen and stopped short right at the, it right in the path of the shelter. The shelter looks like it's being moved. And I'm guessing that's because those two pine trees, like I said, were, uh, have been jolted back and forth. And um, I think the main supporting beam has fallen by the look of it, but we're gonna go have a close look now and um, assess the damage. I think it's still in a state that's fixable. I don't think it's beyond beyond repair at this point, but how lucky, how, how lucky. So yep, as I, um, as I expected, these two trees, this one and this one, these were like the main supporting trees for this whole structure and that supporting beam across the middle was tied to them. Now, when these two start flexing, you can imagine the cordage flexes with it and in turn loosens up, which is what's happened. So I'm, I'm thankful that the whole shelter is still intact to some degree. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. But, um, You can see, look, it's, it's loosened off here massively. Uh, that was the cordage. This was right up here, tight against the tree. And right now it's unstable to even go underneath. So I need to somehow um, take the back off again and re retie this main piece to this pine tree here. Um, it is a setback. It means that I'm gonna have to come back at another date to take off the whole back of the shelter and lift this this bit back up because right now it's sagging and that's not safe to go inside at the minute because all this weight resting on this one supporting beam is just not good enough so um yeah it's a nightmare that i'm gonna have to come back and do that but in the same breath i'm just glad that it's intact still so it could have been a lot worse this could have been in one big pile undistinguishable fr from what it once was so yeah it's not terrible, but it's not great. Just to give you an idea of how lucky I've been really, and I know that the shelter has been affected um, to some degree, but it could have been a lot worse. And I'll give you an example of that now. This huge root ball here that's been uprooted, if we follow the trunk of this giant tree, you can see that it roughly stops about here. And if we come directly down from there, it's not too far off the shelter. Um, in fact, if I step out a little bit, you might even see that it does end further up that way, which would have brought it right on top of the shelter. So, yeah, I mean, that that in itself is a worry, the fact that I've got this now huge overhanging tree resting above the shelter. Um, I'm just hoping that that, it, that has rested quite firmly. It looks like it has, but again, it's just always a worry and um, quite disappointing. But this is what to expect when you build shelters. It's never gonna be perfect. Um, and things do fail along the way. It's about learning and making adjustments to get it right. Even if it means I have to move the shelter now to a more secure location, that might be what I have to do. But I do think I've got quite lucky and I can patch this up, make it right again. Um, it's just gonna mean coming back on a different day and spending a few hours here to make sure that it's all safe. So just to summarise guys, um, like I've said, the shelter could be rebuilt, patched up in maybe three or four hours, that's no problem. But the issue I'm left with and the worry I'm left with is that this tree here, I mean, if that had fallen any other way but the way it's fallen, we might have been all right. Um, but 
it's fallen right over the shelter, over the over the path of the shelter. So, <sighs> I mean, what do I do? I can patch the shelter up all I want, make it as good as it was, but we're always going to have that worry that one night sat around the fire, that thing's going to come down. So, I think realistically, it's time to move the shelter because although the shelter's not completely wiped out it's not safe enough now to, to stay in this location so like I said that, that tree could have fallen in any other direction but the one it did and we might have been alright but I'm not going to risk it especially once you're sat in that shelter and you can't see out that thing could come crashing down and before you've even realised what's happening it'd be on top of you so yeah I guess guys at this point that I have to say I'm left with little to no choice but to um, to start again as hard as that is to say but there is no other way I can't risk that devastated as you can imagine a lot of work went into this I spent weeks coming back and forth um, building this place up but what else can I do? I'm just walking back to the car now guys, a bit devastated to be honest because as you can imagine I spent a lot of hours there, I had a lot of great plans for, for the winter camping and how I was going to build up the camp. Those dreams haven't ended by any means, they've just been put on hold for a little bit but as soon as I can at the next available moment I'm going to be back out scouting out a new area. Now you know, it feels like a tragedy right now, but the real tragedy, I guess, would have been sat in that shelter one night when that great big tree decides to fall through. That's the real tragedy, and I've dodged that bullet, so it's better to um, be away from that area where there's always that possibility that could happen and just start again. Um, I've learned a hell of a lot from that camp that will speed up the process moving into the next one. And um, yeah, we just go back to square one. And for anyone that may be thinking it's all to do with my bushcraft building skills i just want to make it clear that that shelter was still standing you guys saw that it was still standing albeit it was a bit crooked but it survived an earthquake it survived a big storm here in the uk and i'm very proud of that the only thing that let me down was site location um, but there again i can't predict where trees will fall and which direction they will fall in so i'm not going to beat myself up too bad about that either um, we just start again guys I enjoy doing it and I enjoy doing it and I guess if this was anybody else that didn't enjoy building shelters being out in the wild like this in all weathers I can see why people would quit and never never do this again but that's just not in my nature like I love being out in the wild and I love um, living off the land so to speak so I will be back out ASAP and I will be scouting out a new location and you guys will no doubt be with me um, from the very beginning of that one as well. We'll make it better guys, we'll make it better. And um, just gotta keep our heads held high and moving forward. It is disappointing, as I said, but what do we do? Just quit and um, write it off, never to do it again. That's not in my nature guys, I'm not gonna do that. So by the time you guys are seeing this, I'll have already been on Howard Hughes's podcast, The Unexplained which is a massive podcast, one that I'm extremely excited about, but nervous as well. 
In fact, I think it's the number one podcast that I listen to all the time. In fact, when I'm driving the car, laid in bed on a night, I always listen to um, The Unexplained with Howard Hughes. And um, they contacted me recently asking if I would go on and share a few of my ideas and opinions on this new finding at Canuck Chase, where the gentleman, the researcher, apparently came across a large print and some claw marks gorged into a tree. So, yeah, I'm going to go on there tonight. That will be at 10 o'clock UK time. So, like I said, by the time you guys get this, I'll have already been on. And, um, oh, nearly went over. And uh, with a bit of luck, it all went well. Um, but it is nice. It's nice that some of these people now are reaching out to me, these big stations and um, platforms, talking to people like myself. I was only on talk radio last week, which is another huge radio station here in the UK, to talk about similar things. So I'm very grateful that my name and the 401 files and everything I do here is starting to reach people with a very similar mindset. I am sad to see the shelter come to an end in this way because in some ways I would have much preferred it if I'd found the shelter completely destroyed and brought to the ground. I think it's made worse only by the fact that on the surface of things this shelter still looks very usable and it's through no fault of my own that I can no longer stay here and use it safely. It's ironic in a way that a fallen tree hasn't physically touched my shelter in any way yet somehow it's been able to create a situation that makes it almost impossible for me to stay there and in turn is much worse. Just like the phenomena that I research here on the moors, it's always the not knowing what really plays with the human mind. Will the tree fall or will it remain the same? Both outcomes are equally possible, yet one possibility holds much greater consequences. <laughs> 